What makes us human is that we tell stories. That's what consciousness is. We are a story that we tell ourselves. As a community, own your story and make it a better story. Give it a happier ending when you're finished with your part of the story than it had when you came in. That is exactly what's happening here, and I've seen that happening over the last 10 years with Building Healthy Communities. Building Healthy Communities is the guarantee that growing up in this place fosters lifelong health and success for everybody. It's not a program, it's not a service. It's a way of approaching and a mindset to how you work in community that intrinsically pulls on the strength of rural communities. There was this idea that we were going to come together as a community and actually dream together. And it took us a while to even get to that place. Rather than thinking about our work as our work about food or our work about education or about young people to instead say this isn't a slate of initiatives. This is about what is the experience of kids and families growing up in our community and how is the work of agencies and nonprofits and government in service to and supporting transforming that experience of the kids and the families in this community to be their best selves. My time before I joined BHC felt like there was like a clock kind of ticking over my head. Like, how long do you have until this place gets you? You know, like, are you gonna end up on drugs? You're gonna end up homeless? Are you gonna end up broke? And getting involved with BHC turned that clock backwards a little bit. I didn't have any kind of that like positive community outlet in my life before. And I didn't know what it looked like to have that. I felt like my voice didn't matter and like there's nothing I could do to make a difference. And there's this idea in Del North that you have to go somewhere else if you want to be successful. But I just see now that Del North is this beautiful place and we can make it better and we can make our own lives better. You look at your community and you go, oh, kids aren't ready for school or people are not getting the food they need. And you're like, oh, I know how to fix that problem. The reality is you probably don't really wasn't going anywhere until we went through this process and we got to something real and something deep. Until you go and talk with people and you understand their life and what their challenge is to make that happen, you don't really understand how to start a solution. Listen as if your life depends on it. Listening to people without judgment, that's the key. Rather than guessing what it was that people needed, we said, let's go really listen to real people and find out their stories and their experiences directly from them. Once they were stirred in their heart, they saw themselves participating in the solution. It's through empathy and through understanding that we can solve problems, but we do it together. We don't do it from the top down. We do it from the ground up. The great thing is about human-centered design in any community is that it is going to let you really actually understand your community's needs in a way that looking at a problem from up here doesn't. You have, you know, higher ups saying, okay, this is a new program, we want you to implement it, and does it always work? No, because the people that are actually being affected by it are not consulted. Having that human-centered focus has been able to create programs within our community that actually do make a difference and work for the people that are involved. Empathy interviewing started it gave all of us the opportunity to really voice our concerns. They didn't think that their words would have any influence on anything, it would be valued. But they came, they got our inputs, and our folks were able to hear them later on and said, oh yeah, we did share those, and they actually worked on it. That built trust. It's healing the community. People are reaching over what used to be barriers, white people, Mexican people, the tribal community, meshing together where you wouldn't see that before. All of those sort of barriers that we construct that keep us apart in society just fade away. We had a wall, a 20 foot long wall full of ideas. Every sticky note had an idea. There was I would say over 400 different ideas that had come from the community about how to address these issues. By digging into those empathy interviewings, it's gonna impact future generations and children throughout Del Norte County. We actually share the same highest hope and we actually share the same worst fear. 
And once you can say that out loud together, you can design better solutions. The momentum that was created through the statistics that came out of the empathy interviews was amazing. It caused this momentum of, I have the power to make a difference. It's not us and them, or it's this group and that group, it's all of us advocating for everybody. Building healthy communities has flipped the switch and brought everyone together in a more collaborative, trusting environment. We were engaged from the beginning with intent. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, what about the tribes? It was like, the tribes are part of this community, and we are. We can't be separate. We are moving forward, lockstep together. We have folks sitting at the table that have never sat at the table together. Throughout my time at VHC, there's never been a time where I felt that I wasn't being listened to and valued. They really do care about making sure that young people are able to share their side of a story. Across the board, young people to adults, even elders, are now feeling more comfortable speaking out on their own behalf. They have really taken great strides into being their own best advocates. We have the power. You can make the difference. It's a real, tangible thing, and that's what the process of organizing is supposed to show you, is your own power. Your opinion and your voice is important because you are a part of this community. When you bring those ideas forward and you bring your voice forward, that is making a change in your community no matter what. We value our students and we value our student voices and they show up to contribute to us and for us to contribute to them. We've built a culture where they depend on us and we depend on them. And our students become the teachers. We are that community, they are that community. I see connectedness between adults, youth, teaching each other about resiliency. In schools, for example, it wasn't the adults who were saying, this is what we think is happening and what you need to do, it was the kids who were saying, this is what we are experiencing and this is what we want to do. And then there was this support network of people who said, all right, let's help you send that message forward. Resiliency is powering through, even though you're going through maybe some tough times, that we can overcome this and as a community have youth empower everyone. Everybody's important to this community. Kids, elders, everybody, because they're all special. Not just within schools do we look at academics and behavior, but we also look at the social emotional part of the child. We look at the whole child, and through this approach to building healthy communities, we're looking at the whole community. You don't really see the hand of the Building Healthy Communities Initiative, because that's not how they work. They work with getting people to change systems and policies so that those people can make change in the community. One of the intents of building healthy communities was to teach us how to make our community sustainable. It was to teach us how to truly understand if there's a problem, how to dissect it, how to get to the root of the problem, how to co-design a change, and then beyond that, how to make that change sustainable. This is a tool that cannot be kept to ourselves or to our community. It's part of what can help to heal not only our community, but heal our world, and it starts here. Community makes a town into a hometown. There's a bright future ahead, but only if you turn the lights on. Basically, all of me is a product of my family and the place where I live. The least I can do is come back and put my hat in the ring, so to speak, to try to make it a bit of a better place. Don't let anybody write your story for you. Write your own story. Create your own narrative. It's not really finding your own home here. It's kind of like, make it your home. Because the world is really how you shape it to be. Community is not just one single person. It's not just one single group or organization just trying to bring everyone together. It has to be, and everyone has a part in it, movement. Because the community is not just one person leading the pack, it's everyone doing what they can to lead everyone forward. I love my, my community. community.